Hello everyone, I am Veos, and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Apparently, in my last video, when I made the lightest SSTO, about 594 kilograms, I was using a mod called Restock, and unfortunately this mod does change the mechanics of the parts, as you'll see in a moment. This, of course, made my heart sink. I was under the impression that the mod did not change the mechanics of the parts, but actually just changed the paint job made them look prettier. I didn't really have a inkling that they would completely change the dynamics of the actual parts themselves. But while most of the parts do act exactly like their stock counterparts, there are a bunch more that unfortunately have drag and aerodynamic characteristics that are completely different from their stock parts. And I don't know which ones those are. You'd have to go through and test every single one comparing them. And I just don't have that kind of time. However, in my last video, of the lightest SSTO, I was able to build this small little pill-sized vehicle and have very little to almost no drag whatsoever. In the comments, there was some of you who said that when you tried to build the same craft, it kept on flipping out of control. Because of this, I went ahead and downloaded a completely pure and clean install of KSP 112.5. I didn't even add the DLCs, it's just straight up ground stock Kerbal Space Program. And what I found out was that the engine that I was using in the last video, when I had the restock mod installed, the engine aerodynamic and drag characteristics were completely different from the actual stock version of the engine. In the stock version of the engine, the side mounted rocket engine actually creates a crap ton of drag. A virtual crap ton. In comparison to the restock version of the same engine, creates very little to no drag. Other than that, every other characteristic of the mechanic of the parts that I used for the craft were virtually the same. So now I was stuck. I had to figure out how to get the craft to be almost as light as the one that I was able to make with the restock mod installed. Unfortunately, I was not able to. The closest I could get was 615 kilograms. And that was because I had to empty out just a pinch of fuel just to cut it down some more to that point. I tried different types of engines. I even tried tried monopropellant for some stupid reason. The best that I could come up with was using the 48-7S spark liquid fuel engine. Weighing in at 0.13 tons compared to its cousin, the Twitch engine of 0.08 tons, it is somewhat of a heavy bitch. So no matter what I tried, it was never going to be five, it was never going to be 594 kilograms ever again. Fully fueled, this little thing weighs in at 0.635 tons, or 635 kilograms. However, I am able to take just enough fuel off of it to bring it down to 615 kilograms. That is the absolute lowest I can possibly go with this craft in pure Kerbal Space Program stock. It took a good 30 minutes just to figure out the flight path of this thing. Pretty much as soon as you take off, tilt the nose to about 65 or a little higher than 65 degrees, and then select your prograde. Once you start getting up about a thousand meters per second, start throttling down. You don't want to blow up the nose of the craft, since the air intake that's on this thing tends to overheat very quickly. Now I've explained, I have explained in the video before this one why I'm using the air intake instead of a nose cone, and that is because the nose cone weighs more, whereas the air intake doesn't. It weighs less. And when you close the air intake, it becomes aerodynamically sound. Now, I can't tell you whether or not drag-wise if it's better or worse, but from what I've seen, I can get more out of this little craft using the closed air intake rather than using the small little nose cone. Now, to make absolutely sure that this was the case, that the small circular intake was better than the small nose cone, I did extensive tests. Unfortunately, I found out that the small nose cone acts like a rudder when, in its, when it's in the thicker atmosphere. Even though its max temperature is a little higher than the small circular intake, it overheats just the same, causing you to have to throttle down consistently to a point where you're just barely putting out enough engine power to keep the nose straight or on prograde. However, the small nose cone seems to have 
more aerodynamic properties, where the aerodynamics of the game influence it a lot more than the small circular intake. So unfortunately, I found myself having used more fuel just trying to keep the nose straight, because if I ended up not putting enough thrust into the engine to keep the nose straight, the nose would grab a hold of the atmosphere and flip over wildly. After a few tries, I managed to get it into space, but then its weight became an issue. And even though it weighs ex just a, just a pit, just a bit more than the small circular intake does, that little bit with this tiny craft is enough to make a noticeable difference. And I would constantly run out of fuel just before making orbit. So it looks like the small circular intake is here to stay. Because as we all know, when it comes to SSTOs, what really matters is the weight once you get into space. The drag is extremely important, but the weight is even more important. Now the engineer's report shows that the weight between the small nose cone and the small circular intake doesn't even make the mass budge. It's still 615 kilograms. However, you can tell that the small nose cone does weigh a smidge more because when you add it on, your delta V readout drops. With the small nose cone, it drops to 2500. Whereas with the small circular intake, you have about 2504 meters per second. Doesn't seem like much, but that tiny little piece, that tiny little bit, can mean the difference between making orbit or not. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Pure stock, no mods, no DLCs, 615 kilograms, tiny, itty bitty, smallest SSTO that I believe can be possible in Kerbal Space Program. An SSTO that flies up there, has the ability to keep itself alive, aka power itself, and act as a small, itty bitty satellite. No Kraken drives, no infinite fuel from the Cal 1000, none of that. Remember that an SSTO stands for a single stage to orbit, which means zero stages. Zero. Nada. Nothing. Zilch. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like, smash that like button, and if you really, really liked what you saw, consider subscribing. We upload often, mostly on the weekends, but we do stream every once in a while, and we tackle things like this all the time. We also have a membership program if you're interested. If you join up, get cool little emojis and badges next to your name and stuff, pretty cool. But anyway, I wanna thank you again for being here and just being a part of this channel. This has been Kerbal Space Program, smallest, lightest SSTO ever. Love you all, stay safe. Safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye bye.